It is the Monday edition. The I don't believe what I just saw. It was 48 to 16. 48 to 16 edition. The how about them Cowboys? I'm worried for Mike edition. But more importantly, the bring on the 49ers edition of Wildey and Tausch. On 94.5 ESPN Milwaukee, 100.5 ESPN Madison, 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. ESPN Wisconsin.com, the ESPN app, your Alexa smart speaker, streaming live video, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and of course everything you need on WisconsinOnDemand.com and the Wisconsin On Demand app. The Packers beat the Cowboys. The final score was 48-32. to 32. Wasn't that close. And Matt LaFleur did not have to put his starters back in. I'm sorry. Didn't have to do it. But he did. Got a little nervous. But they advance. They're expected to play on Saturday at some point in San Francisco, Santa Clara, against the top-seeded San Francisco 49ers. No, I'm it's Jason. Saturday night. It's, it's booked, right? Saturday night. I don't know if that's official yet. Yeah, seven fifteen Saturday it's night. It's official. Yep. Oh, yeah, when did they make it official? Well, last night. Last night last after night. the uh, Lions game wrapped up. Yeah, but it, yeah. yeah, it was official after the game. Uh, they're not going to play a primetime game not out in San Fran. Like it was always going to be Saturday night. Well, be oh. that as it may, uh, they're certainly not going to make the Monday night team then play on Saturday. So we knew it was going to be Saturday, and apparently we know what time it is as well. I'm Jason Wilde in Green Bay. Jesse Nelson is in the Everlight Solar ESPN Madison Studios and from his undisclosed location. He said Super Bowl in his song. He claimed he didn't, but he did. Let's see if he claims it now. It is Mark Tausch or Tausch, good morning. Uh, Well, I also said three tutters. He could have had more. Um, I I just, uh, it, it was an amazing thing to watch when you have a plan which Matt LaFleur had, and you execute it at that high of a level with this young of a football team, I, I you know, we, we all look back at this season and how it's gone and the October swoon and to where they're at now, and we're all amazed. But I don't think any of us should have been amazed by what we saw offensively yesterday. What I'm amazed by was that the Dak Prescott-led Dallas Cowboys with Mike and everybody else was as bad as they were, and that the defense was as good as it was. So I said this is a dangerous team. Your quarterback's hot. Your quarterback's good. Your young players believe. Mm -hmm. And what we saw yesterday was a group of guys that didn't think that what they were doing was anything that big. It was just what they do. So there's all of these other things that come with it. But if you ask me if I thought Matt LaFleur is shocked that he put up a ton of points yesterday against that defense, no, I don't. I think they're shocked that it was as easy as it was, but this was not. uh, It was a it was a big, big win, monumental win because it's the first time a seventh seed. But I am just not. I'm not as shocked about the offensive output. I am shocked that our defense was as good. So it was a great day. It was a highly efficient. Awesome offensive day, but I am really, really mostly impressed that this defense could do what it did yesterday. That's how I looked at yesterday's game. I think we all looked at it and thought a lot of points are going to be scored. Well, we didn't know that the defense was going to score a ton of points, 14 points for the green and gold, and that Dallas's offense would sink. But when you can execute and take the football, and I thought the game was won when they went 75 yards, And then you saw that the Dallas Cowboys defense is looking around like, what the, what, Uh, what happened? And then Dak and everybody else squeeze so tightly because they knew that this opportunity as the two seed and having all these home playoff games was there. And that was what the plan was. And the Packers executed it beautifully. Um, Okay. Okay. It was 27 to nothing. It was 27 to nothing. Like, you can say you're not surprised they scored points. 
you could say you're not surprised they won. But the manner in which they won, it was 48 to 16 <laughs> against a team, against a team that had won 16 in a row at home. Against mm -hmm. a team that was undefeated at home this year. Against yeah. a team that was averaging 37 points a game at home. Mm -hmm. Against yeah. a team that was the number one scoring offense in the league this year. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I did not see 27 to nothing and 48 to I 16 didn't. coming. I didn't either. I, my point on all of it was I was not surprised that Green Bay moved the football down the field every time they had it. I wasn't surprised. I was surprised that they kept them at zero, and it was 27 nothing. I thought it could be 24-21 at half. I envisioned that game. I did game. too. So I'm not – so I guess – and Gabe got after me on the post game last night because he's like, well, what – because I just I was amazed that Joe Barry and the defense was able to turn it get the turnovers and shut down that offense to that degree. I was not amazed that Aaron Jones had a big game. He's had big games. I was Especially not amazed Dallas. Jordan Love played great. Jordan Love play, has played great. He and has. Dallas's defense ain't all that. So I guess I just I the the way the game played, I am incredibly impressed by Matt LaFleur's game plan. And the fact that the – it was I – I think I heard this because when the the get-up crew couldn't stop talking Dallas, which that will be for today and until Mike gets fired, and then it will probably move on and we'll start talking Packers. The Packers didn't get hardly any talk on any of the big shows this morning. But I, you just have to be amazed at how wide open guys were, how Jordan Love had complete command of what was going on against that defense – Dan Quinn's defense. Whew. So it, it just was such a – I mean, you start with the offensive line. I mean, I'll do my positives now. Uh, Micah okay. Parsons was not a factor. They didn't Lawrence, have a sack. not a factor. Uh, it was just when you control the line of scrimmage and Matt LaFleur, I was shocked when it was the fourth quarter and they brought Jordan back in, and I agree. They didn't need to. I'm not mad that he did. I'm not mad at all. But – 20 throws. That was the part that shocked me. He only had 20 throws. When you controlled the ball, that's where I'm just looking at Matt LaFleur, and I've said his month of October was one of the worst, and since then he has been one of the best. And what they did to keep Dallas's defense, and Orlovsky did a good job of breaking it down with the split flow and what uh, Dallas likes doing man-to-man, -man, and they never made any necessary adjustments, and when they did, Jordan Love was a step ahead of him because Matt LaFleur had it dialed up. They didn't know if it was run or pass. Remember when he got hired and said he's going to marry up the run so it yeah. always looks like the pass and, and everything else? That's what it looked like. So offensively, I'm not shocked, guys. I'm not. I'm shocked that Joe Barry's defense was that good. That's the part that was, was shocking. Uh, Jesse... Judging from some of your text messages, you were having a grand old time yesterday. Sure was. <laughs> a couple of Coors Lights. It's, it's a lot started, of happiness. It started with mimosas in the morning, and it just kept going. <laughs> Ooh, what a day. <laughs> Coors Light in a snowbank. That actually started it on Saturday. It just kept going. What a time. Just a two-day bender for old, Jess, or old Jelly. Were you shocked? By the way in which the Packers won. Yes, it was one of the games, and I'm trying to maybe uh, when the Bucks beat the Suns in the 20, or 2021 Game 5 of the NBA Finals, when they came back in the big block and the uh, alley-oop to Drew Holiday and Giannis at the end, that's the last game that I remember just smiling and like uncontrollably smiling until yesterday. It was just excitement from the opening drive when they came out and and took eight minutes off the clock and put seven points up instantly yeah, as impressive. tausch predicted it's, they took the ball and they went and scored it set the tone you're like okay if they're gonna do this this is how it starts and it just escalated from there the interceptions the the dominance on offense i i thought 
I didn't think they were going to win the game at all. I thought Dallas would win the game by a score of what it ended up looking like yesterday. I did not expect this at all, and I'm so glad I was wrong. And I'm just mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sitting there just smiling uncontrollably watching the game yesterday. It was unreal. So Jesse, so Jesse, I, 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 no, I don't think I did not anticipate. 27 nothing and 48 32 i was anticipating high scoring on both sides but were you what was the most was it just the joe barry part or were you surprised that our offense was that good yeah i was i was surprised the cowboys were as rattled as they were and made the mistakes Gosh. that were just gifts in that first half mm-hmm. um i was i was shocked the packers were moving the ball as easily as they were as consistently as they were wide open guys I roaming mean, the countryside uh, it was unreal yeah. it was just unreal the whole thing was just ear to ear smiles. All right. So, in the interest of getting the calls more expeditiously, 844 770 3776. Is there a negative that you want to briefly share before it's all Anders, positivity? Probably Anders is probably about it, right? Missing the extra point. Uh, yeah, that, that it? it's a, it's a short list. It's a very short list. Uh, uh, you know what? If you want to get into the short list, the the only other thing that I would say I'm a little concerned about was I thought when you got that lead to the extent that they did, I would have thought you'd have gotten more pressure on Dak as far as just the, it, the it, and this is being very nitpicky. But that's what's you're going to need that this weekend uh, in San Fran. You're going to have to get home, and you're going to have to beat their offensive line. That's the only other thing because the coverage, uh, everything about what we saw yesterday, mixing it up, putting Savage in position position to win on the pick, it, it's just a great day. Just a great day. Not a ton yeah. to complain about. No, no, there's not. Uh, I am going to complain. Jordan Love, who I thought would have some ups and downs in his first – NFL playoff game. Remember, Aaron Rodgers' first pass in his first NFL playoff game was intercepted. And he was as interception-averse as anyone we've ever seen in the league. (laughs) Maybe until Jordan Love. 16 of 21, 272 yards, three touchdowns. I still don't know how he got that ball to Romeo Dobbs for the final touchdown. He was amazing. But, and here's my negative. If he stays out of the game, or if he hands off, instead of Matt LaFleur calling that pass to Tucker Craft, he finishes his first NFL playoff game with a perfect 158.3 passer rating. He ruined it, putting him back in. Who cares? Who who cares? Who who cares about they didn't get enough pressure on Dak? Or 157.9. Who gives two rips Me. about Me! Perfect that? is well, perfect. Nobody cares what you care. It's, yeah, it's not a 300 game. It's a 294. No, that's not the same thing. Come on. Bowling is actually legit. This because So you're telling me he's perfect even though there were three other uh, plays that weren't thrown or incomplete four. I'm just and this telling one you, drop it's in the, the flat is what ruins a perfect game. It's the Get math. out of here with that foolishness. Don't now throw it's dumb. The, why That's did fake you put him, Why did you put him back fake in, math. Matt? Why? Why did you put him because, back in? Because, people, I'm telling you, you got it to 16, and Dallas gets the ball back. And they score and get the outside, and it's eight points. People are people were jittery at halftime. I tweeted out something about, and everybody is still jittery. Twenty-seven-seven. Well, it felt better if we went to giving up that garbage. And by the way, I agreed. That was I didn't want to see that touchdown before the half, and there was a false start and everything else. But I I, I just wonder when Matt Lafleur got in his mind because he's an analytics guy, and this is a great question that I hope somebody asked after the game. Of was it always going to be? I want the ball. I want to set the tone because I just felt like all week Dallas. Dallas is a good team. They played god awful yesterday because the pressure got to them. They were not playing with house money. They allowed the pressure to get to them. And when you can put what the Packers did was they won the first big pot. They took the some of the chips that the Dallas Cowboys had, and now the Cowboys were down to their last twenty dollar chip. And everybody that's gambled knows how that goes. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> if I don't win this next hand, then I'm really in trouble. And you know what? When CD dropped that little slant on third and three, that's when – and then Green Bay went and pressed and said, you know what, now we're burying them. The all gas, no blank and blank, they did it yesterday. And the Cowboys were stuck in first gear and never could get out of it. And it was because of the tone set. I believe if Dallas got that ball first and scored, obviously yesterday looks a whole lot different. I still think Green Bay was better and was going to be tougher to uh, stop, but that was everything yesterday. That first eight minutes of the game was everything. First ten minutes when they stopped him and then got the ball back. That was the game because Dallas couldn't get out of their own way and they let the, the bigness of the moment get them. And this young little upstart plucky team with nothing to lose said, oh, baby, we're going to just keep rolling because we don't know any better. And that's what happened. Uh, they did play like a fearless team. The coaches coached that way. The, the quarterback played that way. They were not phased by the moment at all. And, it, and at this point, there's no reason to think they're going to be phased by the San Francisco 49ers either. They may not win. But they just, they do not blink. They are not, a, they don't flinch, as Barry Alvarez would say. And the fact that they took the ball and got stuffed on their first two runs, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're sitting there, What I don't know what it was, third and seven or something like that. And that they get the big completion and then they're off to the races. We saw well, it. They got a PI. They got a very oh, important pass interference along there too. Yep. Uh we saw plenty of times when they couldn't score a point in the first half early in the season. That ends up three and out. And then the tone is completely different after you took the ball. Instead, they delivered, and the route was on. All right, we want to get to all your calls today. Remember when we used to do this, it was all therapy? Now it's all celebratory. That's, there ain't no therapy that's going on here. definitely a sea change. Definitely a sea change. <laughs> 